Hi guys, my name is Borro Dante, and welcome to the second part of the Tribal Totem God. So it's actually morning, I went to bed after I recorded the first part, so this is the next morning. And I gotta say, we did quite an awesome job last night. It's not perfect, but it's definitely quite interesting. What I noticed, and what actually Nadia told me, <laughs> is that it's kind of weird how there's no leaves behind the character. Obviously, I wanted to support the silhouette of the character, so it would read better over here. But we better do that not with the blue color, like actually showing like there's sky in there. It shouldn't be the sky, it should be the rest of the foliage. So we should replace this blue in here, at least partially, with a bright greenish air perspective thing. So let's go ahead and do that, and then actually start using our references from this to make things look juicy like this. And actually search a better shape and anatomy and whatnot for the character. So let's start. Okay, I think I fixed it up real nice now. Added a little tree over here to break the perfect symmetry of the trees of being the close one, the further one, the close one, the further one. Added another one in here so it's kind of like, I don't know, less obvious. So yeah, now let's think on the character. We'll use the references, but first, I think we need to work a little bit on the lighting. I mean, this light from the top is too sharp. Also, it's not everywhere where it should be, like it should be in here as well, and probably a bit brighter here. And generally, the contrast is a bit too high, like, I know the sun is from the top, but there's really bright sky all over the place, plus all the reflected light from the foliage all over the place, so we'll have quite a green ambience, ambient light on the character everywhere, so this shouldn't be this dark, this is way too dark. So we'll add a bit of a brighter environment to the lighting of this character, but also slightly greener. Since everything is so green around it, it should affect the lighting of the character too. So let's go ahead and do that. And probably as I'm doing that, I'll also will be searching for the better shape somewhere. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no plan. It's just fun to search as it is. Okay, awesome. I worked through quite a lot of anatomy here while working on the light, made the rare legs make a bit more sense with these extra legs on top. I think I kinda still need to connect them to the rare part of the body still, but already kind of a lot more fun looking than just some random silhouettes of legs in the back. So yeah, we went from this to this, this is pretty awesome. Now, this is a good place to start using the references, so let's go ahead and do that. So this looks a lot like it's just a flashy character. By the way, I'm really not sure about these hoops for the feet, maybe I'll do something else. Even just some kind of wooden stumps will look better than this, I think. This is just too cliche, you know. We already have some kind of horns here. That's more than enough for this cliché look. I really love how adding this paler color for ambience really reads well as the ambient light from the green foliage. This is so interesting, like, you really have to believe that it will work when you do it, because it's kind of counterintuitive. When you apply this kind of approach, you think, oh, come on, adding something pale will make it look dirty and lame, but not really, it will actually make it look a lot more realistic, like this color, more yellow and paler that I applied everywhere, it really works great for this kind of 
ambient lights because uh, the skin color is kind of warm and the green is almost opposite to it so that's why whenever it will be lighting up the object in the shadowy area it will make it brighter but also paler so yeah let's go ahead and see what we can do I want to make the whole character kind of made of this kind of thing connected with some kind of hay streaks like this you know like a, a very messed up giant voodoo doll or something like that but maybe more than that maybe it will actually have parts of flashy body like it kind of came to flash a bit when it was brought to life uh, with some kind of sacrificial ceremony that's why there's blood all over the place like it awakened and then devoured whatever that was uh, presented to it possibly a human so yeah let's see how we can apply it i'll probably add stitches of hay in here add some sacky cotton-ish texture all over the place in here it will be just torn cotton probably if we'll manage to apply it the right way in the right places it may look really awesome like it will actually have this awesome touch to it which will kind of increase the resolution of the character it, it's not gonna be just the shape but actually something that you can imagine how you can touch it and that makes things a lot more interesting so I made the eyes even more crooked in a way I pushed this eye a bit closer and this one was stretched a bit vertically upwards just to make it even more handmade or something everything should be super asymmetrical and I think I'm nailing that <laughs> I don't know like in general even like this I think the painting looks really cool like I really love the fact that it works very well even at a big distance and in a full close-up the brushwork also looks very nice even though it's almost been just a dry brush everywhere without blending this is the blending brush right now and I've been mostly using this one that doesn't really distort anything and especially for the tiny details right now I'll probably make a great use out of this non blending brush because it applies a very precise color spots wherever I need them but we'll see I'll probably be jumping back and forth as usual also yeah the breasts I'm not sure how they came to existence but they're here don't have nipples though can't flag the video I mean there's blood but <laughs> I I don't even know okay let's start I think I'll actually start with changing the hoops into something simpler, actually. Okay, progressing pretty cool, I think. This looks really intense. It's been a while since I actually put so much of uh, so tiny details on something. Looks like a lot of fun. Now, thing I'm doing right now is actually I'm adding just the shadows that will be underneath the streaks of hay that are uh, sewing up this hole in here. Because it's actually easier and much more strategic to first add the shadows that will be underneath the objects and then put the objects on top. At least the major ones, because they actually need to have like a big massive shadow. And the smaller ones that I'll add when improvising, that doesn't matter all that much. So yeah, now I'll be adding some kind of stitches here. Okay, done. Done for today at least. I don't know, I'm not sure if I actually need to detail any more into this, but for today I really don't have any more time. And I think it's looking pretty cool and working as the character as a whole pretty awesomely. So yeah, I managed to add some of the details onto the legs and the thighs and uh, torso. I kind of like the limbs being just uh, smooth, meaty sticks like that. Like if they were soaked in blood so much that they just uh, lost their sacky texture and now it's just this. 
Maybe I would add some rare appearances of this uh, cotton texture, but generally it's not necessary. I kind of like them being just like that. Kind of brings the variety of material too, which is nice. But yeah, mostly, of course, we don't have time to make everything look like this on the whole image. Thing is that I think I kind of managed to drop the details in the proper amount in the main area, so it looks just right. Kind of like these weird metallic caps. This was really random, but I added them. And it looks kind of nice, I don't know, I like it. You guys tell me what you think. And tell me if you want to continue detailing this, we can as well do that, but really I don't see a lot of uh, sense in doing that. So yeah, I guess this is it. It was a pretty cool warm-up after a big break, and now we'll move on to other projects as SCP, Eat Your Reds Jeremy, Overpains, and so on and so forth. Oh yeah, it even looks lovely mirrored. Which is always a good sign. <laughs> I love the legs, they're like so pressed by the weight. They're like almost breaking or something. Which is really cool. I wasn't trying to do that, but I like the way it looks right now. <laughs> Tropical Silent Hill. Okay, so yeah, this is it. And I thank you for watching if you did. I guess you did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe, tell a friend. Worship questionable gods. Do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Damn thighs, though.